how do superchargers work, and what's a smooth throttle tune? Interesting questions. We have been asked quite a bit on the Jag Land Rover 5 liter and 3 liter supercharged platform about smooth throttle tunes in the last few months. Um, something that we weren't really sure about and something that um, another company was talking about uh, we couldn't really figure out. Um, we'll put a couple of uh, pictures up if we can find some to kind of explain this later on. But first we'll get into how superchargers work because this is relevant to the discussion. So what is a supercharger? Well, if you go backwards a little bit, what's an engine? An engine is just a big air pump at the end of the day. And the more air you can make it pump and the more efficiently you can make it pump that air, the more power it's gonna make. So one of the ways that you can get more air into the engine is by shoving it in there. And really, that's what a supercharger does. So if you wanna think about it as a fan, this is a big mechanically driven, belt driven fan that's pushing air into the engine. Here we have a beautiful 2300 displacement Harrop supercharger that fits the five liter JLR engines. And here we have some broken down components of the 1900, which is the stock supercharger. So you can see when you turn the shaft here, which is being driven by the engine off of the supercharger belt drive system, that it turns these screws. And what these screws are doing as they rotate is that they're actually drawing air into them like this pulling it through the intake here. So you have your throttle body here, you have your screws turning, sucking air in and pushing it out this opening here. So this opening on the JLR application is actually on the top. It gets pushed up through the lid, down through the heat exchangers, which are helping to cool the charged air and into the intake runners down into the engine. So that's the simple version. What gets more interesting is how do you actually control these things? And this is where the smooth throttle question comes into it. How do you control the supercharger? Well, early on in the days of supercharging, at least as far as the modern era, I believe it was sometime in the early 80s and it was Mercedes that kind of sort of figured this out the first. Um, Every single engine that has a supercharger on it is going to run most efficient when the throttle is open. So we have a throttle body in front of this and that butterfly, just like a throttle on a normally aspirated engine is opening and closing to help allow more air in and out of the engine. If you think about the turbulence of the air that's produced when you have the throttle partly open and that air is trying to flow past it, the sooner you can get that butterfly wide open and eliminate any turbulence the more efficiently this engine is going to run. So it's gonna make more power, it's gonna run more fuel efficiently. So it's in the interest of whoever's setting up the ECU to control the engine to get that butterfly open as soon as you can. So on a supercharged engine and on a JLR engine, they will get that throttle open very, very early. Uh, Chris could tell you exactly when, I think it's somewhere around 30 or 40% input on the actual throttle pedal. They're trying to get that throttle open get that engine running efficiently. So how do they control acceleration? Well, this little guy here is a bypass valve. So as the air is coming through here and passing by the screws, on this side here, you're probably gonna have negative pressure where it's sucking air in. And once it's come past the screws and been compressed, on this side here, you have pressurized air. So you're gonna see on a stock supercharger peak of around 10 PSI of boost. If you run dual pulleys on them, like our, our kits that we offer, you're gonna see about 15. We can get into the low 20s with the 2300. Now, aside from controlling acceleration, you also have to have a way to relieve that boost. So if you're pounding along, making peak boost, wide open throttle, and suddenly you jump off the accelerator, you need somewhere for that boost to go. You can't continue to have that pressurized air going into the engine where you're not gonna decelerate, you're gonna continue to accelerate, and you're gonna be trying to deal with higher pressures than the engine can really handle, given the amount of airflow that you're actually allowing to come in. So that's where this little bypass valve comes in. It's controlled here, and that bypass valve will open up, and it provides a pathway where the pressurized side can recirculate air back into the intake side and relieve that pressure. So that's great for relieving the pressure. How does that work in terms of controlling the vehicle? Well, you've got your throttle open, wide open as early as you can. You can actually use this bypass valve 
to control the amount of boost that's going into the engine and subsequently control the amount of acceleration that you get. Now, this is a fairly complicated thing in terms of how the ECU works if you're not familiar with them, which I'm kind of not. I know enough to be dangerous and we got very smart people working for us who do. But essentially what you're doing is you're keeping this open as much as you can and you're controlling how much torque the engine generates and how much it, it accelerates depending on the amount of load that you have by modulating this bypass valve. So that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. I didn't realize that until I dove into this industry. I thought that the throttle was sitting here controlling everything. It's actually this little valve here that's providing the most of the acceleration control. So what does that have to do with a smooth throttle? Well, we couldn't figure this out because there was a lot of chatter from certain areas uh, about smooth throttle tunes and bodges that people had come, to, uh, come up with and we really didn't know what they were talking about. Um, there was a post that we saw recently where it came to light that somebody had actually changed the way that this valve was modulated. So on all these modern supercharged engines, for JLR it's 2013 on, they're controlled by a little electric motor. It's just like a throttle body. So it, it knows when it's in its closed position, it knows when it's in its open position, and you can control it with a, a large degree of accuracy. The previous generation had a vacuum actuator here. So they were using either engine vacuum or vacuum from a vacuum pump to actuate this and pull the valve open or closed. You can still control that to some degree with a solenoid that's allowing that vacuum to flow or not flow, but it's a much less precise way of controlling that valve than something with an electric motor. There's a reason the manufacturers switched away from that system and switched over to an electric one. So, throttles, smoothness. If you're trying to make peak power, you want to keep this closed. You want to create as much boost as possible. And as you're accelerating, if you're at 5,500 RPM wide open throttle, yeah, you want this thing shut. You want to make as much boost as you possibly can. If you're rolling into the throttle on part throttle or lower RPMs, and you have the throttle butterfly wide open, and you're trying to modulate acceleration with this, if you're asking for peak torque or you're asking for too much boost and you snap this bad boy shut, boom. You're gonna get a whole bunch of boost, you're gonna get a whole bunch of sudden acceleration, and you'll feel that kick in the back. That's something that we started to notice in 2014, 2015, when we first started tuning these engines. We were pretty new to them, this was 10 years ago. We started putting pulleys on them, we started tuning them for power, and we started tuning them for drivability. And we found the exact same thing. If you were asking for too much boost or it, in, in actuality, how the ECU is doing it is asking for torque. If you were asking for too much and you didn't scale that demand nice and smoothly, it would snap the bypass shut. You'd be driving along on a constant throttle, accelerating through a certain RPM, and boom, that bypass would snap shut, and off you go. So that's a problem that we ran into. We created our own data logging system, which didn't exist at the time, so that we could accurately log the position of this bypass valve, which none of the other data logging systems available will do, and we figured out how to scale that. Um, that's probably an oversimplistic way of describing it, but in terms of you know, layman's terms, how it works, that was what was required, is to figure out how to, how to shut this valve gently under partial throttle conditions or at lower RPM. So that's a problem we ran into and we tackled getting on for 10 years ago. So that aspect of what we do has been incorporated into our tunes for years now. What actually was happening is that someone couldn't figure that out, or at least we don't think they could figure it out, because some pictures surfaced from another company who was actually rectifying this um, somewhere over in the UK of a late model electric motor bypass valve actuated vehicle that had that motor connected zip tied up out of the way and had a vacuum actuated valve inserted into this um, controller. So because they couldn't figure out how to solve that issue tuning wise, we believe that they just simply reverted back to the way that the previous generation of vehicles worked because they were able to solve the problem that way. You know what, solved the problem. I guess that it worked. Um, somebody else uncovered it and started talking about smooth throttle tunes and a problem that they had solved 
and that being something that only they had. Um, in actuality, a problem that we ran into nearly a decade ago when we first started tuning these engines and, and solved pretty quickly through data logging them. So that's kind of a complicated way to explain it, but this is really a critical part here, this bypass valve, how it's commanded to close, when it's commanded to close, um, and how you scale that to produce drivability, which is one of the reasons that we have our own F-Pace, our customers' development cars, our own XE, so that we can go out and drive these cars on the road and make sure that they function in a way which is controllable and fun um, and workable for drivers in everyday daily use. So smooth throttle tunes, yep, we've got them, we've had them for years.